All right, who else do we have that hasn't been discovered that we could potentially get very easily? We've got one with Toxing Lao. That'd be determining his killer. The rest of the achievements are unlocking so far, from what I can tell. Like, the only one that I didn't get unlocked was Solve Six Fates. So I don't know what the fuck was up with that, but oh well. That might... Could that be a typo? My thinking is that it might be any 60 instead of any 6. So it might just be a typo and that would naturally unlock with 60. I don't, I don't know, but whatever. Uh, we've got this guy who seems like a Finley to me. Sure, good enough. Speared by a foreign enemy. We'll say that he is... Well, let's see if there's anybody else who has a better chance of being correct. We've got this guy who was killed by an explosion. No idea who he could be, though. A Finley Dalton Helmsman. That might mean that instead, this guy is Finley Dalton, because he... Yep. <laughs> He's got nothing for you, man, I'm going to be honest. 46, 48, 60, 22, 5, and 1. Holy shit. All right. Um, 31 is third guy on the stairs. He was killed by Linoid... Volkov, Leonard Volkov. Uh, let's see what else we got. So there is no doubt in my mind that he is correct, so we'll just go ahead and make him purple. Hoxing Lao. Um, <laughs> fucking exploded. Completely forgot about that. Somehow, again. Uh, next part, Elvis Waiters. 37. That was. Did we not have him? I thought we did. Oh. Hmm. Oh well. Let's say that he's Piddle and Marlroy. Thomas Lanky. Nicholas Botterill. Ooh, not. Unknown. Lewis Walker and Henry Brennan. No, okay. Well, I uh, figured him out. If you figured him out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Disappeared? Doesn't say that you did. Who else disappeared? Do we not have that many more people that disappeared? I thought we did. That one's correct. There's no doubt about that. Uh, doubt about that. John Naples should be correct. So, we'll go down the list for this guy, and hopefully one of these is correct. Peter Milroy. Thomas Lanky. Nicholas Potterill. Lewis Walker. Henry Brennan! No. No. Oh, huh. Okay, um, so that is definitely correct in terms of his fate. So I guess we don't have... We've got... We'd be able to figure him out, wherever the fuck he is. Him. We'd be able to figure him out. You definitely have one other person correct. Maybe it's John, not John Naples? Who else would it be, then? John Naples. Uh... Henry Brennan. Lewis Walker, Nicholas Spiderill, Thomas Linky, Peter Milroy. Uh, that's about it. Um, who else on the ship could potentially be Welsh? Because that's the only thing I can think of. Maybe 46? Maybe? I don't, I don't know. Naples, uh, we'll say he was shot. Well, he still would have been shot by John Naples. I just wouldn't have been correct about who it was. So I guess he's... You know, I, I feel like he... He's like the one guy that stands out, and the one guy that stands out on the list would be Welsh. So I feel like he's correct. Um, no idea who he is. I don't think he died due to John Naples. Who else do we have available in terms of names? I guess we can just sort of go back and forth. Uh, Henry Brennan. We'll start at the bottom since it'll be easier to go that way. Uh, John Naples. Uh, Henry Brennan. Uh, Henry Brennan. No. Uh, let's see who else would be available then. Uh, well, do we have three fates that should be correct? Yeah, he should be correct. If he's John Naples, then he would be correct, but that might also be causing problems. Um, he's the one guy that I feel like would have a lot better chance. Oh! Wait, hold on. Were the others two correct? Lewis Walker, he's correct, obviously, because I just fucking switched him. Who else was correct? Oh my god, I got fucking Henry Brennan correct? Wait. Hold on. I think I have Henry Brennan correct? Uh... That's... Hmm. Okay, Paul Moss, we obviously know he's correct. Oxen Lau was killed by Henry Brennan. So it's 46 Henry Brennan? Is that is that what we're dealing with here? I'm going to say yes. Because I'm guessing it was the first bullet that killed him. I, I'm not entirely sure. I'll 
put that as yellow for now because I'm not 100% on that. I don't know who 48 is. I'm going to say he's Henry Brennan for now because I'm going based off of that first bullet and he was the guy who shot first. So I feel... If he's not John Naples, then who the fuck... Let's see, who else do we have available in terms of names? Holy sh... Oh, I thought we only had one page. Uh, we have Finley Dalton, who's a helmsman. Peter Milroy and Thomas Lanky, who's midshipman. And Nicholas Botterill, who's a topman. I need the glossary. Midshipman, officer in training, assist various, uh, various officers and tradesmen in order to run ship operations. Usually a privileged status. Okay. Uh, helmsman, I think, was one. Rated seaman in control of the ship's wheel and general movement, uh, moment to moment navigation. And Tommen, high rated seaman specializing in work up off the deck and sails and rigging. Okay, let's see then. He looks young, but not particularly well dressed. So we'll say that he. Is a midshipman, maybe? Or who else was there? It was. It was. him. He's got a hold of the wheel. Okay, who the fuck? Uh, that was Helmsman, I think? I'm pretty sure. In control of the navigation, yes. Okay, so he's probably correct. How he died, though. Or what happened to him, I do not know. Disappeared in the doom. You only have two memories. One there. One there. So I guess we go to this memory. One with, uh, the Abigail. And hopefully we'll spot him? I... Hmm. I don't know, he only appears in the one memory, and that's the one memory in which he would disappear, because the other one is fucking three chapters ahead of- or five chapters ahead of him, rather. We're fucking close, by the way. We are very close. We've got, like, 45, 48 fates correct, so... Uh, Helmsman... No. <laughs> I've never noticed your face. Well, that's thumbnail material. Got this guy in a hat, it's not who we're looking for. Him, Charles Minor, is his name. The Helmsman? No, the top man. So where the hell is the helmsman? You! You were the helmsman. You were probably crushed by a beast? Possibly? No. Drowned by beast. Yeaten by beast, no. Torn apart by a terrible beast? I don't know. Um, what would we say that has the highest chance of happening? Because this is the last memory in the sequence. Because the guy's already torn apart. Abigail just got fucking decked. Quite literally. Nobody else dies here, I don't think, so... I'm going to say... This is currently just being pulled by the Kraken. I don't think the Kraken would eat anyone. Why else would they attack the ship? I'm gonna say crushed by beast. And we'll have to see how that one goes, because I'm not 100% sure. This guy looks like he is of upper class of some sort. So that would probably be... Midshipman, maybe? Uh, Peter Milroy? No. Thomas Lanky? No. Nicholas Potterill? No. I think this is correct. So I'll leave that be. This guy... I have no idea who he is. He's not the helmsman, that's for sure. He's not one of the mates. I'm gonna say he's unknown for now. Topman is high-rated seaman, yeah. So that would probably be someone who's older. So I'm going to say that he is one of the midshipmen. This guy, he might be the topman. And then he could potentially be Thomas Lanky. No, then he's Peter Melroy. And then this guy's Thomas Lanky. No. Okay, um, apparently he's really easy to identify. Let's see, 54. Let's go to him and see if we can find something for him. 54. It's not clubbed by John Naples, so I guess that would be... Who, I should probably write the names down. Alright, really it's just four names that, uh... That are kind of in contention here, I would say, for this guy's identity. Obviously, John Naples isn't incorrect. Uh, we'll change this. Because I, I... He might be John Naples, he might not be. I don't know, I'm just check, uh, testing, really. Uh, let's see, we have Peter Milroy, Thomas Lanky, Nicholas Butterill. Nicholas Butterill? No. Uh, Thomas Lanky? 
No. And Peter Millward. No. So he is potentially incorrect. Because this guy, he's the fourth mate steward. So this guy should most likely be the fourth mate. So why is he not correct? Maybe this is Henry Brennan? And this would be John Naples? It does look like he should be from that area. Or that region in the world, so... He's John Naples, we'll say then that he's Henry Brennan, because he was one of the guys- Oh! <gasps> okay then! I... When did Henry Brennan shoot then? So obviously the first bullet didn't kill him. I don't think the second one was Henry Brennan. So who... When did he shoot then? I don't... I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter because he's the guy that fucking killed the guy. So it doesn't... It doesn't matter in the end. So... Uh, let's see. So this one is Henry Brennan. So he was instead clubbed by Henry Brennan. Yes. Okay. Okay. I've been recording for over three hours. I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm really into this. Okay. I don't, I don't want to stop because I don't want all my memories to fade. Brennan. Not Brenner. I don't know what's other one. I'm really there. Mm -hmm. Yep. I... <laughs> My brain's shutting down. I gotta finish this fast. I think the idea is that if we go all the way to the end, and I mean the very, very end, I think this is the area where there's fates that we can't determine. Like, uh, Martin Perot, uh, Martin Perot, Perot? The third mate, uh, and Philip Dahl. I think they're in this area because we can't determine their fates at all. So I think we don't need to worry about that. We just got to get all the way up to that. Which means we've just got to solve. He's absolutely correct. This guy, we aren't 100% sure. He did mention the name Pete. I do remember that. And then we've got this guy. I think that is it. Oh, no, we got one more. Yeah, that's literally all we have left. Those four guys. This guy, he mentioned... Pete. Tell Pete's mother I tried my best. Who do we have in terms of a Pete? Peter Milroy. Probably isn't him. We we'll say he's Thomas Link. <sighs> Two more fates are correct. What? Usually it's three. I guess because we only have four left. All right then, Thomas Slinky. I'm, I'm not gonna bother with the fucking notes anymore. Like we've we've got the share all figured out. This man is most likely Peter Milroy. Who do we not have solved? Thirty-five. I think thirty-five is the last guy. Well, I didn't think I'd actually get this far. Honestly, I didn't think I would ever finish this game. I thought I would just give up eventually because I was just too fucking stupid. But we're here. In the end. We got there. So, I don't know what's going to happen after this. I don't know if it's just going to immediately kick me off the boat or whatnot, but in case it does, I do thank you all for joining me on this journey. What the fuck happened there? Uh, okay, then. Uh, I do thank you all for joining me in this journey. And, uh, fuck it. Let's get out of here. I'm tired of all the sea salt. Oh. Uh... Maybe he's the Captain Seward? Uh-oh. Maybe he's the midshipman. And then this guy is Nicholas Butterell. And then this guy is Philip Dahl still. Oh god, I thought I was done. What the fuck? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you are instead uh, Nicholas Butterell. You are Peter Milroy. No, we're gonna go. Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I, I'm confuzzled. Who else do I not have determined here? Actually, I. Philip Dahl is definitely correct. There's no doubt about that. So we don't have to go check that memory. I'm thinking this guy no doubt exploded. It's just a matter of identity. He might be incorrect in terms of who actually speared him, because I remember. That was a thing with somebody else, I think. Marcus. 
or Winston Smith, rather. I put Spear by Enemy, but Spear by Beast is possible. So let's see. Is that fixed? Ever? <gasps> There's nothing left to do on the Yobra Din. You're goddamn right, there's nothing left. We are getting the fuck out of here. Because holy shit, I just fucking... I solved all the fates. Holy shit. Oh, oh okay, I, I guess this is... This is it. It's, it's happening, everyone. It's fucking happening. Oh, man. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm not sentimental. I want to get the fuck off the ship. I'm coming down. You better be ready to leave. And I know we've been here for like 11 hours, but... It's time we can get to go home. We should go. Storm's nearly about, so we won't be coming back. Finally. Sit down so you don't fall out. Oh, don't worry. My fate's not in the book. One week later. The Honorable East India Company. Insurance assessment for the good ship, Obradin. Victim of calamitous events at sea. Prepared by the Company Office of Investigation. Okay. I was gonna take a drink, but then there's a lot to read. Alright, ship. Damage in Squall Atlantic. Sunken storm, fall mouth, payout claimed is 20,000. Cargo company, all cargo lost, payout claimed, 5,000. Cargo, crown, all cargo lost, payout claimed for restitution, 3,000. Captain Robert Whittle, fate, suicide by gun. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate, number four, and state forfeited to the crown. William Hoskett, first mate. Fate, shot by Captain Whittle. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny. Est uh, estate find, 25, tw 25, just 25, really? Yep, whatever. Edwin Nicole, second mate. Fate, shot by... Yep. A criminal findings, murder of crewmate number two. Attempted mutiny and theft of cargo. Estimate find, 100. I'm going to say pounds, but that might not be correct. Euro, maybe? I'm going to say... Sim dollars, I don't fucking know. I might put a third mate. Fate is unknown. Findings of merit, extraordinary valor, exceptional performance of duties, the state's awarded outstanding wages and rewarded. Outstanding wages and reward is 90. You cannot say that they got outstanding wages when they got 90 bucks. Fuck off, game. Fuck off. John Davies, fourth mate. Fate was clubbed by Brennan. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate. The state fined $15. Alfred Clestial, the bosun. Fate was torn apart by Beast. Findings of merits, exceptional performance of duties. The state's awarded outstanding wages and reward is 70 bucks. Charles Minor, the bosun's mate. Fate torn apart by beast. Criminal findings, murder of crewmates. The state unknown. Dispense is claimed 15. Henry Evans, the surgeon. Fate alive in Africa. Findings of demerit, abandonment of crew and vessel. The state's awarded outstanding wages, $15. Or $50, rather. James Wallace, surgeon's mate. Fate decapitated by beast. Findings of merit, extraordinary valor. The state awarded outstanding wages and reward, $50. Winston Smith, carpenter. Fate speared by beast. Findings of merit, extraordinary valor. The state awarded outstanding wages and, and reward, $60. Marcus Gibbs, the carpenter's mate. Fate spite. The state unknown. Outstanding wages donated to pension fund, $30. 
Thomas Sefton, the cook. Fate, he was struck by tail. The state awarded outstanding wages of $40. Emil O'Farrell, the butcher. Fate, spite. Okay, you know what? Fuck it, I'm not reading all this. I'll just leave this on screen, so if you care, you can pause. The preliminary drafts of this assessment has been approved by the Royal Trade Gr Granter? I think. Total claimed is $29,285. On behalf of the Honorable East India Company, I certify all statements as accurate and declare this matter closed in its entirety. H. Uh, H. E. I. C. I thought that was like a bit rubbed out, but it's H. E. I. C. Chief Inspector. So. Ah. Pocket watch remains in your possession. The book returns to its original owner, Henry Evans in Morocco, as requested. One year later. Chief Inspector, I write to you with the unfortunate news that Dr. Evans has passed away. He succumbed to his illness shortly after receiving your package. He was very pleased with your correspondence and asked that his gratitude be expressed by returning the book to you along with the means to complete it. As for the three of us that remain, the Obradin is in distant memory and the dreadful chapter in our lives that we wish to forget. Do not write back. Regards, Miss Jane Bird. Hmm. What do we have here? It's obviously that's the book to the right. We've got O. Oh. What the hell? Oh. Okay. 
This tower belongs to you now. Please finish it. Henry Evans. Alright. I guess we've got one more chapter to finish. There you are. Collect your things. Where's the key? To that door. Gone. Yeah. There's no time. We need to go. Right. There you go. What are you up to? Nothing good. Oh my, what the fuck? Okay. Henry Evans. <gasps> ooh. Ooh. Oh. A monkey, I think. Yeah, that looks like a monkey. We got Philip Dahl, who died. Uh, we got him, who was speared by something, spiked by something. This is... What are we dealing with exactly? This is a break, I think. Because that's the door that's locked. Yeah, Henry Evans locked these two up. Is that... Is that the beast that we're dealing with? Maybe? Interesting. In the Lazarette, a friendly but not entirely pleasant monkey companion was sacrificed in the pursuit of knowledge. What? Mm. Alright. That's... Not all. I guess we have the, uh... Body of both of them? Maybe. Seems like it's... Just the... Third mate. Alright then. What happened to you? A third shell! The captain didn't toss them all! Leave it! Help me lift this! Stop! Why? Well, let you free! Give it the shell! Do it! Hoist it out. To the main deck. Throw it over. Lock the door when, when you leave. Get the tail, boy. In return. The ship. Uberton. Yeah. See you at home. I see. So whatever's in here, I'm trying to appease giving it to the mermaids. Hmm. So they're dragging this and is fighting them. Or maybe they're fighting it out? No, they grabbed it out of here. And they're dragging it to the top of the deck. Because they now gave it the shell. I see. So he must have been spiked by these things. Most likely. Because they do have spikes on them, but I don't know. How many... It most definitely is the mermaids. There's no way that the crabs are here. So what that hand was, I believe that's actually the monkey's hand and not one of the actual crewmate's hands. So you, I believe you were spiked by a terrible beast. This for the next guy. Oh, hello. The mermaid. Well, I guess we did have a cow, so... Ah, the 
Kraken. It's a part of this entire thing. As it was trying to get the shell. Okay, then. And so who killed this thing? It was the captain himself. So I guess the bargain was handing the shell to it. So they would fuck off. So I guess that explains why they were still here. Because he said they were at the bottom of the sea. They most definitely were not. Gotcha. In the Lazarette, the captured beast fought against its jailer and was speared for the trouble. Okay then, another mermaid. What happened to you? Call it off, damn you! This is your Kraken! You brought it here! Send it back! Ah, this is what it means. This is. One guy mentioned that the uh, captain scared it off or something. That's because he was killing all of the ones in here. I'm guessing these are three separate pits instead of like one a big pool, so that explains why this one survived. He's in here. Either he's knocked out or he's dead, and I'm pretty sure he's dead. Alright then. It's all starting to come together. In the Lazarette, the non-holy creatures defined shrieks were greeted with the fatal bullet. Now is this? It is indeed your time. Tell me, Philip Dahl, how did you perish? So I'm guessing he burned to death, considering the fact that he did the same exact thing as the other guy, and he was chained because of the fact that he killed that one guy. Okay, so he got chained in here, along with this for some reason? I guess to avoid anybody from, anybody important from touching it, or anybody that they didn't mind dying, or want to die, so they put this guy in here. So I'm guessing he would be burned to death, most likely. Not seeing anything else, not seeing anybody out there. Doesn't seem like it. Philip Dahl, the captain's steward, he had burned to death. Well done. All fates are correct. <sighs> you love to see it. Well, I have no idea where this story is going to take me, but, uh, I'm just going to say now. Thank you all for watching, and, uh, I guess we got one more door to go through.
the end. Well, I was going to wait for credit. Oh, well, they're, they're at the credits. Okay. Like, I, oh, hello. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so, I, obviously you guys kind of know my feelings on this game. Like, the small things kind of annoy me, but overall, this is a good game. I would give it a solid 7 out of 10. Well, this... For what it is, 7 out of 10. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be a giant game to be a 10 out of 10. Uh, the only reason that it's not any higher for me... Uh, for, I don't even know what happened there. The only reason it's not higher for me... Is the fact that... Just small little quality of life things that probably should have been a part of the game. Being able to go from... Uh, go to a memory from the book. Instantly... That would be nice, because I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be the case. I think that should just be a thing. Um, I, I guess another thing would be not being able to hear voice clips of the characters. That one... That one I'm fine with not being there, but... If, if the ability to go to, straight to the memories from the book was there, I'd be fine without having the voice clips. But if you don't have the voice clips then I don't see any, you know, th that's another point off for me, I I would say. Um, I would also say, you don't even have to have individual voice clips for every character. You could just have the, the audio log for that scene be playable in the area where you can read the log. Like, I want to be able to hear the voices. Like, I don't see any reason why that's not the case, but I don't know. I don't, I, I'm going to say this now. I've never made a game before in my life. I don't know if I ever will, but I know it's extremely difficult, and I know there's challenges to every little thing. But with a game that's this small, I feel like it's got to be, you know, high quality in every little thing. Because if it's not, then it's just not a good game in that sense. And this is high quality in like 90% of the places. It's just that the 10% is the quality of life, where you can't go to a memory straight from the book, you can't hear the voice logs, it's just small little things like that. Uh, sprinting, I don't think is necessary in this game, I did fine without it. Uh, it's just... It, the way I imagine it is that every game or any piece of media is a pool. And for a game like this, where it's a small pool, Imagine that's like a backyard pool, a 20 foot pool, 20 foot wide, 10 feet deep, and the deeper the pool, the higher the grade. So if it's 5 feet deep, it's 5 out of 10. If it's, like in this case, it's... The game starts off 10 out of 10, but this quality of life things knock it down to 7 feet, that sort of thing. That's my reasoning behind it. And the bigger the game, the bigger the pool, you can have those fluctuations in height because it works. But with the game that's this small, you can't have that fluctuation. It's got to be one single height. Because you can't have a 20 foot pool with one end being, you know, like 10 feet, but the other end being like 7 feet. Because that's just weird. It doesn't work, really. The only, re the only way that that would really work, I guess, is if you were had the pool on a slope. But then, like, what the fuck is the point of having a pool there? You just put it on flatland and that'll do. But it's just like... The size of the game, I feel like it it doesn't have to have that stuff, because obviously I did fine without it. I got the entire fucking game finished, I solved all the fates, I did all that. It's just that those small things are massive compared to the size of the game. Because if this was an open world game, like 70 hours worth of gameplay, like the fucking Witcher, this would be fucking nothing, basically. Like, it would... The impact that it has on the score is absolutely nothing, because a game like The Witcher is a 100, or maybe not 100 foot, like a thousand foot wide pool, and it's got, like, fucking depth everywhere. If this little, like, area over here, you know, this 10 foot by 10 foot area, that was just, like, 7 feet tall instead of, like, 10 to 20 or whatever, then that's just a regular fucking pool. Like, that's just what a pool is in, like, a, I don't know, a fucking complex, a swimming complex, something like that. That's just a regular pool. 
But in this game, this is a backyard pool. It's a small little pool, one that you go swimming in every once in a while. It just makes no sense for it to have that quality dip, or that dip in the depth. I hope this is all making sense, because it makes sense to me, and I'm not the best at explaining things, but... Regardless, um... At the end of the day, this is a good game. I know you might have just watched the series completely, but I do recommend that you play this. Uh, at least at some point in the future, maybe like years down the line when you've forgotten all the, all the fates, all the identities, that sort of thing. But I do recommend that you play this because this is a good game. Just those small quality of life things knock it down a couple points to a uh, couple points for me. With that being said, I think that's everything for at least that I have to say. So yeah, I'm gonna leave this video off here, and I hope to catch you in the next video, whenever and whatever that shall be. See ya.